Hello, artists. Today, we're going to create this collage using positive and negative space in our picture. As you can see here, I have actually created two different watercolor pictures. I've cut them up and then I've rearranged them onto the paper so that you can see the examples of both positive space and negative space. Positive space is the thing that we're looking at, the person, place, or thing that we're looking at. The negative space is all of the air and space around that thing. So you're actually going to create two watercolors today, one using positive space and one using negative space. To start, you're going to need two pieces of white paper. Take your first piece of white paper and fold that in half. Now we need to make the little rectangles here of our watercolor smaller than the frame of the outside paper. So I would like for you to take your ruler and put it right on the edge of this folded paper and with your pencil, just draw a line and you're going to do that all the way around. All right, so once you do that, you're going to need to take your scissors and you're going to cut on the line all the way around. And we're just cutting that paper away. All right, so now I have a much smaller piece of paper. It's actually a folded piece, so it's two, and we wanna cut that into along the fold. Once you have the two pieces of paper, you want to fold it in half again, and then fold it in half one more time. and then open it back up and you should see folds where there are four sections on this piece of paper. We're gonna do the same thing with this piece of paper, fold it in half and then fold it in half again. Nice strong folds. And then when you open it up, you will see the four different sections. So on both of these pieces of paper, you're going to use your pencil to draw leaves. And, and these leaves can be any shape you like. I cho chose a very simple shape, but you want to have some curvy lines that cross over your folds. So you don't want just one curvy line. You want several curvy lines that cross over your folds. And these are kind of like a vine or the stem of your plant. On each one of these rectangles, these separate little rectangles, I would like for you to draw a minimum of four leaves. The more the better. Um, and they can vary in shape. They can overlap one another. And they can also go over to the other side. So it doesn't have to just stay in that one rectangle. So you're going to draw these everywhere. And like I said, there should be a minimum of four leaves in each one of these sections. So you're going to do that on this piece of paper and then you're going to make a different one on this piece of paper. Once you finish those, you're going to take your Sharpie marker and you're going to go over the lines in black Sharpie marker. For the sake of time, I've already completed 
these two so that you can see approximately what it should look like. And in each one of my sections, rectangular sections, I have a minimum of four leaves, even though some of these leaves like this one goes from one section to the other. So you want to make sure you're counting. Um, overlapping leaves always looks really good too. The next thing you want to do is choose the colors you're going to watercolor your leaves. Now, on my original picture, I used greens, but you don't have to use green. Leaves can be a, quite a bit of different colors. If, you, if it's the fall, you might find leaves being oranges and reds and yellows instead of just green. So I think that's what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to color them kind of fall like color. So you're going to need some water and a brush and uh, a paper towel to blot your brush with. And I'm going to start with the negative space. So you'll notice that in the positive space leaf picture, I've created the veins on the leaves. But in my negative space leaf picture, I have not. So they are, they are going to be blank because what we're going to be coloring is actually not the leaves, but just the background. So because it's a fall picture, I'm going to be making my background red because I know in my positive space picture, I'm going to be using red, orange, and yellow for my leaves. So when you go to fill in the negative space, I like to outline the space that I'm in first. It makes it a lot easier to try to control the paint and keep it from smearing onto the leaves. So I definitely want to use the very, very tip of my brush in these small sections. I don't really want to use my full side of the brush. Like here, I can do that because there are no leaves right here. But right here, I want to be very careful not to get the paint on my leaves. The whole idea is not to paint the leaves, but just to paint the negative space. So once again, I'm going to kind of outline the space first and then fill it in with my color. And I'm going to do this everywhere on this particular picture. Now, I think you get the general idea here, and that is don't paint the leaves only paint the negative space. I'm outlining a little bit with the very tip of your brush really helps to keep that paint from going over onto your leaves. Now I can see that the color varies a little bit. It's a little bit deeper right here. I can move some color around right here just to fill in this a little bit. So play with that, but only color the negative space in your picture. Whatever color you choose to do, whether it's green, whether it's red, yellow, orange, just do the negative space. And I'm going to stop right here, even though I haven't completed this, to show you what to do in the next piece of paper. So to complete this one, I would just color everything red in the background. All of my leaves and all of my stems should remain white. So this is my negative space picture. And of course, I would complete the whole thing red, but you know what that would look like. Now here's my positive space picture. This time I'm only going to paint the leaves and stems and I am not going to paint the negative space. 
So I'm going to start with my stems and I really want to have a nice point on my brush. So I'm going to roll my brush on the paper towel just to kind of make a really nice thin point because my stems are quite skinny and I really want to be able to stay within the lines as much as possible when I go to paint them. And I'm going to start with the longer stems first that crisscross each other. And then after that, I can go and do my smaller stems. And I'm doing that in brown. And I still want to keep the paint just on the very tip of my brush. I don't want to use the entire paintbrush to paint these skinny little stems because it would go way outside the boundaries that I've created for the stems. Okay, now once I've done the stems, it's time to do the leaves. And like I said, this time around, this is a fall picture. So I'm going to paint some of them red, some of them orange, some of them yellow, and maybe some of them two-tone, two different colors. So I like to skip around when I paint these kinds of pictures so that I'm moving my paint around the picture. It's not all in one spot. And you notice I don't have to add more paint to my brush very often. Okay, that's good with the red ones. Now I'm going to wash my brush, tap, 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 wipe, and then I'm going to create some orange. So orange here, and I'm going to be very, very careful that I am not painting the background. Moving my picture around, turning it upside down, turning it sideways so that I can really cover the picture with the orange leaves. And lastly, I'll paint some of the leaves yellow. Last one. And now if I want to, I can go back over these and create some two-tone leaves. And the leaves that work best for that right now are the yellow ones and the orange ones. So I'm going to use a little more red and I'm going to just paint part of this leaf red and part of this leaf red. This one, just skipping around and adding a little red to some of these leaves just to have a nice change of pace. Okay, so I have completed this picture. This is my positive space picture and here is my negative space picture. Now, when you go to put this picture together, you're going to need to cut along the folded lines. You're going to have four pieces of your negative space picture and four pieces of your positive space picture that you're going to glue onto another piece of white paper. So I'm just going to finish this off really quickly so that you can see what that looks like with color. All right, now I'm going to need another piece of white paper and I'm going to need my glue stick and my scissors. 
So I am going to cut along the folded lines of my negative space picture. So there they are. Put them right there. And I'm going to cut along the folded lines of my positive space picture. And there they are, all four pieces. I need one more sheet of white paper. And now before I glue anything, I am going to arrange my pieces of negative and positive space watercolor onto this paper. So here we go. Now I want to have a little about an inch border on each side. So I'm going to alternate negative and positive space. And it really doesn't matter which way your leaves are facing because you've cut the picture up and there is no up or down, right or wrong. So once I get my picture lined up, I'm going to see, is that about an inch all the way around? Looks pretty good. And from here, I am going to glue my pieces of paper onto the bigger sheet. So I like to do that uh, each one individually. So I'm just going to take this one off, leave the rest there. And when I go to glue this, I just want to glue around the outside edge. I don't have to glue anywhere else. You don't have to put a lot of glue on this paper. So I'm going to add you here. Same thing for this one. And I'm just going to do this all the way down, trying to make sure that these smaller pieces of paper are centered on the larger piece of paper. I hope you enjoy creating this negative and positive um, collage of leaves. Uh, it's a really fun and easy project and it's very effective. As you can see, the pictures turn out really fun and interesting looking. Hope you enjoyed this today, artist. That's all for today.